they have woodworking classes, um, wood turning, wood turning, uh, art classes where you do painting or other stuff. They've done stuff with felt and needles to form pictures. They've done wood burning. It, the list unfortunately goes on and on. I don't even know all the programs they have. So we have some special guests that are with us here tonight. Sergeant Ars, please introduce our guests. And when, uh, if you're a guest, uh, when they call your name, please stand. Okay, uh, uh, Jerry Dubois. From uh, veterans, he's our veteran service officer, and Liam Materas uh, with uh, Northeast Passage, and we have Burbank Community Media with us tonight as well. We have Liam Materas. He is from Northeast Passage. If you can tell us a little bit about your press, about what Northeast Passage is. <coughs> Um, thank you so much. It's quite an honor to be here. Um, I'd like to thank Burr Community Media for being here as well, and Brian for inviting me, and Steve and Dan for kind of introducing me to your legion. Um, it's, like I said, quite an honor to be here. Uh, so my name is Leah Macheris. I work for Northeast Passage. I'm a recreational specialist. Um, I run programs for veterans through our um, <clears throat> programs at Northeast Passage. We are a nonprofit, um, somewhat related to the University of, U of New Hampshire, and uh, I'm excited to kind of show you what we're all about. All right, so this picture, I don't know if you can see it well, this is Shoreside, but basically Northeast Passage, um, our mission is to empower people of all abilities to be able to engage in recreational activities. Um, no matter what abilities you have, we have a bunch of equipment in order for anyone to access recreation and leisure um, to, with whatever you like to do. Hello, my name is Stephen Dix. I'm a member of the Charles S. Hatch Post 79 here in Berwick. I'm also a member of the Honor Guard for the Post. Yeah, my name is Daniel Dix. Yes, we are twins. <laughs> I'm a member of Charles S. Hatch Post 79 in Berwick also, and I'm also a member of the Honor Guard. As far as uh, Northeast Passage is concerned, um, I first found out about them at the Manchester VA. I was going there for uh, orthopedics on my knee. And I saw a flyer saying that they helped out with disabled veterans. So I took a chance and I gave them a call. And that was about eight years ago. NEP was founded in 1990, so we've been around a little little while now, and I think that's where um, a lot of our reputation comes from, is kind of growing and expanding. Uh, our, our facility is related to the University of New Hampshire in not only like a learning capacity, being part of recreation management and policy, but um, also that's where our headquarters is. And we are also a chapter of Move United. Um, and a lot of our programs are uh, funded and uh, provided for by grants at the Adaptive Sports Grant from the VA. We get other charitable donations from individuals and um, any fundraising that we can do in order to make our programs happen. This is a picture here of someone using one of our adaptive golf carts. This golf cart has the ability to swivel the seat so that you can Thanks. be moved into a standing position for golfing. It's all hand controls so that you don't have to use your legs at all in order to operate the golf cart. And this is able to go onto the green, get you all the way to putting. Um, we house these at Window. We run golf programs through there and these golf carts are available. All right, so we have a lot of different activities. Um, what I'm here tonight to share is our veteran-specific programming. A lot of our programming is open to all vets always, um, but we also have veteran-specific programming that, that maintains the, the group of veterans, and um, there wouldn't be civilians in those groups. And then we have civilian and veteran mixed. For veterans, the events they have for veterans are all free. You don't have to pay for it. They have the equipment, so if you don't have your own stuff, they have stuff you can use. You can even rent the stuff through them 
So if you want to get a kayak and go out kayaking on your own, you can get all the equipment through Northeast Passage as a veteran, and it's free. I mean, and that's just, to me, it blows my mind. This is one of our hand cycles um, on one of our scenic rail trails that we end up riding on, and we have plenty of those, and then also recumbent trikes. It's a recumbent trike. A recumbent trike, that's a great question. So it's a, it's basically... It's laying that backward. Yeah, yeah, laying, almost like laying backwards. So you, the seat is, it's, it's a full seat, and you're introducing more of a reclined position um, to get pressure off your back and core and other. Mm -hmm. So it's the same pedal system. Uh, it's just the seat, like, is more like a chair. That's. I've done kayaking. I've done fishing. I've done uh, fly tying. We've just started rock building for the first time in three, again, in three years. Um, so this is a lot of our programming. Um, I feel like we're always expanding as well. But our general recreation, which we're saying where veterans and civilians are mixed, uh, we have archery, we have court sports, which mainly involves pickleball these days, um, cycling, golf, paddle sports, which would be kayaking and paddle boarding. Uh, pickleball along with the court sports, as I was saying, water skiing, and other winter activities. So winter activities like fat bike riding or um, getting out doing ice fishing and stuff like that. So the veterans only, um, similar, very similar. So we have archery and air rifles. We do bowling, cycling, fly fishing, and fly tying. Um, we're also getting into rod building now. Um, we have ice fishing, kayak fishing, saltwater and freshwater fishing, paddle sports, so kayaking and paddle boarding, pickleball, wood carving and wood turning, wood burning, leather working, and we also host a couple camps throughout the year uh, where you can come and join um, at a location where we sleep overnight and we do a bunch of these activities all within a few days. Um, they're, they're recreational therapists. Yeah. Um, but they also do a whole lot, lot more. I don't know if I can actually describe what they do. This is a picture of where we house over our 700 pieces of adaptive equipment so that anyone of all abilities can participate. Um, these are also available for rental. All rentals are free for veterans. Um, and we sometimes are able to meet you halfway or meet you wherever you are with that piece of equipment if transportation is difficult. Um, if you're at an event and would like to rent, say, a cycle from that event, if we're not using it for the rest of the week, you can go ahead and take that with you. Um, and if, the, if that specific cycle isn't being used for the summer, we've had some veterans um, rent it for the entire summer. So we have a lot of equipment, and you can even have... Um, the, you can have a consultation at our facility in order to figure out which cycle is best for you or other pieces of adaptive equipment. You can come in, see any of us, someone like myself, and be fitted to a piece of adaptive equipment um, that's specific to you. The, I, I made a phone call. I actually went into the office, met with the staff there, and they asked me some questions as far as what I was interested in, what I was capable of doing, what my goals in life might be as far as getting back out into the community. So I wanted to kind of display some, I can't bring all my equipment here, so I thought I'd bring a couple of the adaptive pieces that we use. Of course, all typical uh, shooting stances are fine during archery. Um, but I thought I'd just show some of the pieces of adaptive equipment so that everyone knows that um, there's access for all. So this is one of our draw lock systems. This is an individual who uses a wheelchair to get around and this, this is basically a rifle rest that we've modified in order to hold a bow on its side. So it's not a crossbow, everything's still just a bow and arrow, but it lays it on its side and we have a trigger system that which holds the bow string back, kind of alleviating some of that need for strength and dexterity and then it's just a trigger system you're still able to aim um, and fire where you'd like but a lot of that physical aspect is is helped through the draw lock system that we have we also have different hand modifications um, bite tabs if you would like to use your teeth 
Um, you don't want to lose your teeth, though. So uh, sometimes um, the other pieces of adaptive equipment are you know, preferable. We've also done archery up at Bear Brook Street Park. Um, and we've gone fishing right at the pond there, too, which we were up there one time, and they just were stocking the pond. So we stopped shooting archery, and we went fly fishing. <laughs> Everybody was catching fish left and right, except for me. I didn't catch any that day. People all around me catching fish, no matter what I threw, I didn't catch anything. So I, I stopped fly fishing and went back to archery. <laughs> so, and then any sort of high visibility targets. Sometimes you use pythons if visibility is um, impaired and you can hear where you hit. Uh, so that, that's what we have for archery, some of them. Uh, this is what would be a recumbent trike. So this is one of our fat trikes. So this would be used in sand or snow or mud. And this gives you more access because the wheels are a little bit larger and you're able to go on more unstable terrain. But the recumbent style is the same. So we have foot powered, hand powered. We have the ability to tandem, tandem on two wheels, tandem with two trikes. Um, we have bikes with e-assist, trikes with e-assist. And basically the point of having the recumbent, um, even if you could potentially use a typical two-wheel stand-up bike, usually you can go for a little bit longer and your endurance is better and it's a little bit more comfortable of a ride when you're in a recumbent trike. So. They, have sp they have sports chairs that are almost like for playing tennis in. They do have some tennis chairs. I started doing the wheelchair stuff be with a thing that they called court sports. Um, basically it's like either ultimate frisbee or basketball or something like that. And the reason I play in a wheelchair is, like I said previously, I have a messed up knee. I've had several operations on it. <coughs> and it just does not support me well enough to be running around. So I started playing in a wheelchair. And you want to talk about an upper body workout. <laughs> The first time I did it, within 15 minutes, my shoulders were screaming at me, and the next day I could barely move. But now it's the point where it's fun. So I actually prefer these a lot myself. This is, uh, we have a bunch of different pieces of equipment to get onto the beach or into the sand. This is at one of our saltwater fishing events out on the channel. We go striper fishing. Um, May, June is when they're in, over in Portsmouth. So this is the ability to get out into the channel. You're still in waders, because um, you're in the water, but gaining access to, to salt, salt water, beaches. We have other um, more compact dirt and mud style wheels for different applications. And so, all of these are available for not only our programs, but again, for rental. If you did want to go out, say, with your family somewhere, you could also rent from us and, and do the same. They have a veteran-only striper day. Oh, yeah. So we went out on boats. That's real fun. That's fun. I mean, there must have been close to 100 veterans or more on about 20 boats that went out. Um, they feed us breakfast. They give us lunch. And it was free. And that shocked me the first time I heard about it. And we were going because... For veterans, the events they have for veterans are all free. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, water skiing. So these are a couple of our vets tearing it up. Um, you can, there's different options for water skiing. These are our sit skis. You could also stand up ski if you like. Um, I wanted to demonstrate here the fact that you could remove um, your hands from the tow rope and you could leave it in the block on the ski. And you can use your, your head and your torso to carve rather than having to hold the water ski rope. Um, and in that same vein, you could also, he has the ability to just pull that right out and then you're, you can use more of your, um, you know, you can carve in and out of, out of the wake a little bit more than if you were inside the block. Our paddle sports, this is one of our tandem boats. We also have a bunch of pedal drive boats, which also have more of a camp chair-like seat um, for comfort. And then if you'd like to use your legs rather than your arms, say you have some sort of shoulder injury or you'd like to be more upright in general, we have the pedal drive kayaks. Those are great for kayak fishing as well. 
Um, the tandem options are cool and sometimes also better for fishing so you can just work on angling rather than having to paddle. But we have a lot of different seat modifications in order to build up the back or go around the sides. Um, we have single kayaks, we have different sizes and, and buoyancies for any sort of comfort level on the water. And we also have a, all of our staff is trained for, um, you know, safety on the water. One of the things they have is adaptive equipment. So they found a way, a kayak that I could fit in because I'm 6'4", 250 plus, And they put outriggers on this thing which really shocked me that they could do something like that. But within three hours, I wasn't using the outriggers anymore. So we took them off, and I got a chance to go down through the marshes in Great Bay. And that was my first experience with kayaking, going in and out the marshes, and it was loads of fun. And after that, I told my brother about it. And so I went kayaking the second time, and within an hour... I, they took the pontoons off mine because I went to make a turn in the pontoon. One went forward, one went back, and I spun in circles. <laughs> and yes, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, so I definitely invite you to come up and talk to me after this meeting if you'd like. I also brought some other pieces of equipment with me tonight that you can look at. I brought some of the uh, woodworking, leatherworking, and pen turning items that our veterans have made as examples. If you'd like to look at those, I have some flyers as well in my card. We're going to be do turning bowls on laves, which is something I've always wanted to try. Um, with a lathe, I've made a couple of pens. I've made a thing they call a lidded box. It's You turn it down, you cut off part to make the lid. Then you turn the rest of it, which is kind of a neat thing. But we've also done a thing they call bandsaw boxes. You take this thing and you cut it apart with a bandsaw, put it back together, and it forms a draw. It's kind of like a jewelry box. But turning bowls, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. Collage, I don't know if you can see it so well with the light, but we have our archery program happening. This is bowling in the bottom left corner. It's usually... Pretty full. This is during our striper tournament, we or fishing trip, where we go out on boats, um, which is pretty incredible. And then this was one of our, we don't do the felt painting right now, but we could bring it back. This is one of our arts and crafts activities. Um, we were doing felt painting at the time. And as I said, you know, we, we rely um, on grant funding or charitable donations in order to run our programs. And so these are some of our sponsors and organizations that um, donate to us in order to make this possible. So any vet from any era can work with us. Because we have donations from multiple different avenues and not just the VA, um, you don't even have to have any sort of percent disabled. You don't need to have any, um, you know, your status can be anywhere. And so we're able to accommodate that for any veteran to come and work with us and everything's free always for all the vets and so it kind of open up opens up a lot more avenues for anyone to come and play outside um, because we have that ability to absorb different costs with all of our different donors okay um, as far as like I said being doing the vet veteran events we would like to see a lot more veterans especially in the seacoast area to get involved with Northeast Passage to help do the events because we don't have enough participation then they don't get the grant money to continue doing the events, which means then everybody loses out. And yes, and spouses are able to come. So because, so I'm talking about just the veteran specific side of our organization, but because we have grant funding for other, for anyone, we can have spouses or family members. We've had um, people's children come, uh, especially to the fishing events. Um, that's always fun. And so I just need to know, and that would be talked about when you came to sign up or called to sign up, you would just say, hey, I, I would like to, go kayaking with my spouse, and I would just need to know, and then I could have a boat for both of you. So spouses can go, and that's also um, accommodated at, at no cost. Here. So actually, if you do one more, that might be, yeah, here's the, yeah, so any questions, if that's okay, yes, for some time for questions. Oh, I can pass that around. <clears throat> I do have, so I have a sign-up sheet 
for anyone. Um, you can go on nepassage.org to sign up for our mailing list to see what we're doing. We always have activities running. So you could go on there, but I also have a sign-up sheet for anyone here today. I know people are going to be watching on at home, but I have a sign-up sheet today. So if you do want to get on our email list, we just basically send out a calendar. We say, hey, this is what we're doing. Would you like to come play with us? And you can sign up through that. Or you could just give me a call as well if you prefer that. Um, I'll have my contact information there as well. Or me. Yeah, true. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for later? Well, the headquarters is located just off of UNH campus. We're at 121 Technology Drive in Durham. So we're in Durham, New Hampshire. So if you were come, you were to come to mm -hmm, to do a consult, that's where you would go. But basically, you would meet us, as someone from NEP, probably uh, someone like me, um, in the community. So if, I, if you were coming to a kayaking event, you'd meet me at the kayaking location. Like I said at the beginning, my name is Dan Dix. I'm a member of American Legion Post 79 here in Berwick. Um, I do a lot of programs with Northeast Passage at a UNH. Um, it's a, they do a lot of veterans programs that are free for veterans, so we could always use more people coming in because one way, if they have enough veterans, they get more grant money, which means then they can do more programs. Um, I've been doing stuff with them for eight years. And I think they're a great bunch of people, and as long as they have programs available, I will keep doing them. So if there's anything that is, I think, the most important and what helps other vets go, so not only making a larger group to foster more of uh, engagement with each other and meaningful connection, it's having more vets um, attend the programs, honestly. Um, so um, my suggestion is, if you're a veteran, you want to do anything. I don't care what it is. I know they do skiing. I know they do all kinds of stuff. So don't know if I could say this, but take a chance. Get off your butts and do it. <laughs> I mean, look at this way. Most of you may or may not have a gym membership. You go to Northeast Pass, you don't need a gym membership. <laughs> you get to do stuff, it doesn't cost you anything. What helps us the most is when veterans show up or when veterans talk about us with other veterans, um, like Steve and Dan are great, uh, I don't want to say cheerleaders, but you know, cheerleaders for Northeast Passage and, uh, and helping get people out and, and coming to events and then also just maintaining that going out on your own with each other after because you've made connections and friendships within um, our programs. Thank you. thank you so much, Leah. Of course, thank you again for allowing me to be here and presenting for you. It's a great gr group of people. So, I mean, it's veterans helping other veterans. It's veterans su supporting other veterans. And I can't say enough about Northeast Passage. I mean, I jokingly say to one of the staff members, Ty, it's all their fault. Because if it was not for Northeast Passage, starting out with the PATH program, I would still be sitting on my couch. Doing I would never nothing. even join the Legion. Yeah. If I, it hadn't been for Northeast Passage. Yeah.